When was the last time you really didn't know something that you should know and you decided to just Google it? I bet it's not too long ago, considering that I Google stuff almost daily. But did you know that Googling something can also lead to a serious incident in aviation? Find out with me today how Googling something led to a loss of thrust on two engines of an Airbus A321. Subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes. Welcome to Airspace. On February 26, 2020, back when the world was still almost normal and planes were flying all over the world, Titan Airways Flight 411 Whiskey, operated with an Airbus A321, had just departed from London Gatwick for its very short positioning flight to London Stansted. Titan Airways is a small British charter airline that currently operates 13 aircraft usually sporting rather interesting liveries. The A321 used on that day, however, was painted in plain white. The Airbus departed from runway 26 left, but just seconds after liftoff, there was a series of loud bangs and flames started shooting out from the left engine. The crew declared Mayday, leveled the plane off and started a 180 degree turn with the intention to immediately return to London Gatwick. Air traffic control was cooperative and helped the pilots to guide the plane back to runway 26 left. But while the plane was still in its first turn, the pilots received multiple engine stall warnings for the right engine as well. According to the captain, the plane was yawing violently at that time due to the repeated engine surges. While he was flying the plane manually, he instructed the first officer to prepare all systems for a quick return to Gatwick. As he lined the plane up with the runway, he intentionally remained a little high on the glide slope to have some spare altitude in case the engines were to fail completely. Luckily they didn't and the A321 touched down on runway 26 left 11 minutes after departure. After the incident, an investigation into the manner was started. As a disclaimer, this investigation is not yet complete and all findings I present to you here are based on a preliminary report. But from what it describes, it is pretty clear what happened. To understand this case, let's go back to November 2019, three months before the accident. During a routine inspection, an engineer took fuel samples from the tanks of the A321. Those samples were sent to a laboratory and were checked for microbial contaminants. Yes, apparently there are bacteria and fungi that can survive in the small portion of water contained in all jet fuels. These microbes may reproduce very quickly and in sufficient quantity can leave a sludge-like byproduct. This sludge can cause corrosion on steel and aluminum surfaces, attack rubber seals and can foul filters and system instrumentation. When the fuel sample of the Titan Airways A321 was analyzed, a moderate contamination with such organisms was found. In such an event, the maintenance task dictated that the measurement should be repeated after 10 days, and if it came back as contaminated again, a treatment with biocide would be in order. However, this measurement was never repeated. Instead, the task of applying the biocide was scheduled to be done in the upcoming larger maintenance event one and a half months later, in January 2020. During a period spanning from January to February 19th, works were done on the aircraft. In the end, one of the last tasks to be completed was the biocide treatment of the fuel. There are only two compounds that are approved for use in aviation, cathom and biobore. The use of biobore, however, is not permitted in the EU. Note that the UK was still part of the EU when that maintenance task was completed. Therefore, cathom was used. The maintenance engineer who performed the task had never done it before. When he read the task instructions, he discovered that he was to fill the tanks with fuel and to add 100 ppm of cathode to that fuel. So he ordered both wing tanks to be fueled with 6200 kg of fresh Jet A1 fuel. He however did not understand what the unit ppm, parts per million, meant, and the task did not explain it either. Therefore, he decided to just Google it. Google knows everything, you know. He found the definition of the unit and even stumbled upon an online calculator. With that, he calculated the required amount of cathode to be added to each tank and determined it to be 60 kg each. Conveniently, he discovered that there was 150 kg of cathode still in store at the maintenance organization and he placed an order for 120 kg of it. Soon, it was delivered to him and he applied it to both tanks. As the task was classified as a non-critical task, no supervision by another engineer was necessary, and so he wrote the task down, as completed. The aircraft was left stationary for 24 hours for the fuel treatment, and after that, some of the fuel was transferred to the center tank of the aircraft to treat it as well. 
In the end, the aircraft was returned to the operator. But soon, first signs of trouble started to arise. The aircraft completed four flights across Europe, but during all of these flights, engine-related problems occurred. Most of these problems happened during engine start, when one of the engines would not start up properly and would require multiple attempts to get going. On the last flight before the incident flight, the crew received two warnings about engine 2 stalling during cruise. These were short in nature, but the pilots also felt some vibrations. Therefore, they advised their maintenance department to please check the engines before the next flight. After the flight, they were met by a maintenance engineer and the new pilots that would fly the plane from Gatwick to Stansted. Information was exchanged and the engineer got to work. However, when he looked up the exact task to be done, he selected the wrong engine type that did not correspond to the engine type that was mounted on the Titan Airways A321. The task stated that during the circumstances experienced during the previous flight, no further inspections were due and the engineer released the plane back to service. The captain that took over the aircraft was still somewhat concerned and decided that he would run up the engines on the runway before he would take off. He did that but found the engine response to be normal and continued for a normal takeoff. Unluckily, the engine problems would only start at 500 feet after takeoff. Had they presented themselves on the ground, maybe he would have rejected the takeoff and returned to the stand. After the plane had successfully made its emergency return, samples of fuel were taken. They looked like this. Normal jet fuel is clear to lightly straw colored in appearance and definitely not brown like this sludge right here. When the investigators looked at the work done, they were quite puzzled by the calculations done by the engineer and by how much cathon he had used. When they calculated the required amount of cathon correctly, the calculation revealed that the correct amount of cathon to be used in each tank was not 60 kilograms, but just 799 grams per tank. The engineer had therefore overdosed chemicals about 37 fold. The brown sludge in the fuel was confirmed to be cathon and was subsequently found in the wing tanks, fuel lines and engines. Also, the engine showed a white residue that most likely stemmed from incinerated cathon. During interviews with the maintenance engineer that inspected the engine after the problematic flight, before the incident flight, it was revealed that the maintenance organization had not yet upgraded their software to the newest version suggested by Airbus. Why the engineer selected the wrong engine type, however, could not be determined. Had he selected the correct type, the associated procedure would have dictated to perform an inspection with a boroscope. That is basically a camera fixed to a long, flexible tube. This permits an inspection of almost every nook and cranny of the engine without disassembly. The engineer would have in all likelihood discovered that many engine parts were covered in residue and would have grounded the plane. After these initial findings, the manufacturer of Cathon discontinued the use of its products for aviation fuels. Also, CFM, the manufacturers of the A321's engines, warned of the consequences of Cathon biocide treatments. In the end, that leaves the EU without any approved chemicals for biocide treatments. Why these steps were taken is beyond me, since the incident clearly happened because of a misuse of the product, not due to the product itself. But I may be missing something here. The A321's fuel systems and engines were cleaned and repaired, and it was put back to service. It's still, or for that matter, again flying in the skies of Europe, with fuel tanks that are, quite positively, free of any bacteria or fungi, thanks to a 37-fold overdose of biocide. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked this week's video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes. See you in the next one.